Okay. All right, Veva. So now this is recording. And uh, what I would like to do today is I would like to go over the grammatics of uh, rolling objects. All right. Uh, let's say if you have a um, well, be before I do that, I want to ask you a quick question regarding the angular velocity. So let's say you have this, you know, rigid body, right? Uh, this uh, guy will have an angular velocity omega, right? Meaning that, um, uh, what do you think? So, so this rigid body will have an angular velocity. How about a point? Can a point have an angular velocity? A point? No. No. Yeah. A point cannot have an angular velocity, right? Exactly. So it's only lines that can have angular velocities. All right. So if this rigid body is rotating, then uh, this uh, line will be rotating the same uh, angular velocity as this line, as this line, etc. Uh, I would like to give you guys a, a question is, um, uh, you know, the uh, merry-go-round, you know, in the playground, right? Let's say you went and then you are sitting on this Mary go round and uh, you know you're sitting here uh, your friend jumped on this one here and then he's sitting there and uh, one of your other friends will actually decide to like really go like far away and he wanted to be like somewhere over here right sitting on a chair over here so you know there are some you know merry go rounds that actually look like that and uh, let's say you were sitting here, uh, your friend, you know, this is you at A, at B, and then one of your other friends was actually sitting there. Uh, which one do you think is going to be spinning faster, A, B, or C? The one who is closest to the point of rotation. Yani, when I'm going to angular uh, velocity, because he's rotating faster. Yeah, which one, which one, guys, do you think is going to be rotating faster? Like, if you had this e equipment, right, where would you want to sit? Like, you know, you went to the playground, and then where would, where would you want to sit, A, B, or C, so that you reduce how, you know, busy you get, for example? I see. At C? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, you get dizzy by, do you guys agree that you get dizzy by? It's not when R is bigger than the velocity, it would be bigger, because they have the same omega. Right, but here I'm referring to the angular velocity, not the actual velocity. So, which person... Uh, is it the same? Which, yeah, which person, yeah, which person do you think is going to be spinning more, like A, B, or C, like for every revolution of this... Uh, uh, for this equipment, which one do you think is going to be rotating more around himself? A. A, A is going to be, so for every turn of uh, this uh, frame, basically, A will rotate, like, let's say, two times, right? And then B would rotate, like, one time, and then C maybe will not rotate. Is that true? No. They're all rotating. They're all rotating. I'm sorry? Don't they all go in the same pattern in you know, zetal uh, rotations? Exactly. So for every rotation of the machine, right, this guy will rotate how many revolutions? So this guy will be here. In this case, it's going to be facing the other way around. And then he, when he comes back, he's going to be here. And then, you know, for every revolution of the machine, this person will only rotate one time, right? And then likewise, this person will rotate only one time, right? So about like this radius, let's say. Right, and then this guy would also rotate one time, right? So it's going to be like like that. Okay, so these people are sitting on the same rigid body, and then they would have the same angular velocity. Uh, although this guy could have smaller velocity than this guy, this guy would have more velocity, more linear velocity as a point, but they would all have the same angular velocity, meaning they rotate the same number of rotations, right, for a given amount of time, for example. All right, and then this is what I mean by that. So if you have a rigid body, every line is going to be, you know, for every one revolution of this rigid body, this line will rotate one time, this guy will rotate one time, and then etc. Okay, so this is very important. So a rigid body will have an angular velocity, and then meaning that every line on that rigid body is going to have the same angular velocity, not a point, right? A point cannot have an angular velocity. A point can only have a velocity vector. Okay? Okay, this is this uh, 
for that. Uh, uh, what I would like to do is let us uh, start looking at rolling motion. So let's say I have a wheel, and uh, and in the case of rolling motion, uh, you have two situations that could happen. Right, one way is that uh, this wheel could be rolling and it's not slipping, meaning that um, you know there's no slipping between the wheel and the ground. And the other way is that there are slipping. So let's first evaluate the case where the wheel is not slipping. If the wheel is not slipping, basically uh, this point here, let us actually uh, call this point O. Uh, a point O basically is not gonna be a sliding on the ground. So essentially point O is gonna be common to the wheel and to the ground. What do you guys think the velocity of point O is going to be if the wheel is rolling, but it's not, um, it's not sliding? Uh, doctor? Yes. Uh, session on Blackboard. Yes. Okay, I'm going to Okay, yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh, okay, so what is uh, what is the velocity of point O? If it's not slipping? Yes. Uh, it would be zero, right? Okay. Exactly. If if this if the wheel is rolling on the ground but it's not slipping, then the velocity of point O is going to be zero, right? Uh, so again, so the wheel is a rigid body, and essentially the wheel will also have some angular velocity omega. Okay. And um, let us actually put this frame I J. So the wheel is a rigid body, right? And because there is no slip in this case, then the velocity of point O is going to be the vector point O is going to be equal to zero, right? And, uh, uh, you know, the reason is, uh, for example, in your car, right, your tires don't wear very quickly is because uh, the, you know, your, the tire of your car is rolling, but it's not slipping on the ground, right? So if it's, if it's not slipping, then there is no rubbing over here, and then there is no wearing. So if I'm trying to find the velocity of point G, which is the center of gravity of this wheel, how can I find the velocity at the point G? We have the velocity at uh, point O. We take it as our reference. Exactly. So this is what we're going to do. So we're going to use our kinematics equation, and then I'm going to find velocity of G with respect to O. And I'm going to take point O as my reference plus omega, right? Omega cross RG with respect to O, right? Uh, what was the velocity of point O? Zero. Zero, exactly. How about omega? What is omega in this case? As a vector? It's 2 pi r? No, omega is angular velocity vector, right? 2 pi r is what? 2 pi r is uh, perimeter mm. of a circle, right? Omega, omega yes. is your angular velocity. I'm trying to express this omega right here, right? I'm trying to express this omega in terms of my ij frame, right? What is omega in that case? It's not in k, no, it's inward. Yeah, so essentially you are going to use the right-hand rule which we described earlier. So this is your omega, and then omega is going to be in a minus k direction, right? So omega is going to be equal to minus omega k, right? So this is the vector of omega. Okay, we said the angular velocity is a vector, so I can always express omega as minus omega k. Is that clear? Yes. All right. And this omega is like essentially like we mentioned earlier, like theta prime, right? So if I have a line here and if I have a line there, uh, then omega is going to be the rate of change of the angle that this line is making with respect to any line, right? With respect to any fixed line. If that line is fixed and, you know, you had a you know, protractor basically and then you were uh, finding uh, how much this angle between this line and then this fixed line is changing, it's going to be omega, right, as a value. In our case, omega is this uh, vector, and uh, let us try to find the velocity of g. So vg is going to be equal to omega, which is minus omega k cross rgo. What is rgo in this case? We said rgo is a vector that points from o to g, right? So this is my rgo, right? Uh, what is rgo in that frame? Assuming the radius of this disk is r, how, can someone tell me what is rgo? Dr. Yeah, so I'm trying to find the velocity 
at point G, right? So the velocity at G is equal to omega cross RGO, right? Yes. So I'm basically substituting omega with its vector. So it's minus omega K. How about RGO? The RGO here in all of G. So RGO is actually equal to what? RJ. RJ. Right? Okay. So right now what remains is you have to do the cross product of these two vectors, right? K and then J. And the easiest way to do a cross product is you have to do, just simply write I, J, K, and then write it one more time, I, J, K. So K cross J, if I'm going to the right, then it's gonna be positive. If I'm going from right to left, it's gonna be negative. So K cross I is equal to J, J cross K is equal to I, but J cross I is equal to? Minus K. Minus K, exactly. So here, K cross J is equal to what? Minus i, that's c minus for i. So it's going to be omega r times i. r, right? So there you go. So here is your velocity at point g, which makes sense, right? So we know if that wheel is rolling like this, then point g is going to have this velocity, which is equal to omega r in that direction, okay? Or theta prime times r. So there you go. So here is how you can calculate the velocity of this point. Okay. Uh, Dr. Nahma Awashi, when we wrote the kinematics equation, uh, can be uh, Vg equals to V0 plus omega cross RGO, but we have plus in velocity. Yes, the last term was the velocity of G with respect to O, right? In a smaller frame. And this last term, basically, if you use, you use this term, if point G itself is trying to move on this rigid body with some velocity. In this case, okay. It's a rigid body and then point G is a point of that rigid body that is not moving on it. If this guy was a bug, then yes, but here this guy is zero because that point is not moving on this rigid body. Okay. Okay. Okay, so next let us actually try to find the velocity of this point. Okay. How do I find the velocity of that point? We take it with respect to G. Exactly, so it doesn't matter. Actually, you should be able to get the same answer if you find it with respect to this point or that point, right? Let us begin by finding the velocity of point P relative to point G, now that we actually have the velocity of G, right? So the velocity of point P is gonna be equal to what? Vg plus omega cross Rp with respect to G, right? Vg is just calculated, which was equal to omega R times I, right? plus omega cross rp with respect to g. So plus omega, omega was equal to minus omega k cross, what is rp with respect to g? It's gonna be equal minus to? R, minus uh, ri. Ri, not minus ri, ri, right? Why, because from left to right, it is pointing in the i direction. Ah, min g la p, mazbut, mazbut. No, from, yes, from g to p, exactly. So omega ri, how about this cross product? What is k cross i? K cross I is equal to J, okay. right? So I'm gonna end up with minus okay. omega R J, right? So this is the velocity of point P, which sort of makes sense, right? So if this point is here, right, it's gonna have downward component omega R, and then it's gonna have a component like that as omega R, right? So this is your omega, this is your omega R I, and then this guy is gonna be your omega R J. So your total velocity vector at this point is gonna be in that direction, and it's gonna be equal to what? Omega r, right? Square root of omega r squared plus omega r squared, which is gonna be omega r uh, square root of two. Does it make sense? Or the magnitude of Vp essentially, right? It's gonna be equal to square root of omega r squared plus omega r squared, right? Which is equal to omega r square root of two. This is the total velocity vector. أنا بس ما فهمت الآخر شيء بس أخذنا ال directions لل ال r كل الوقت. What do you mean here? بال equation تبع ال kinematics. أول واحد ال v p equals to v g plus omega cross r p g. Yes. بس ترسم ال r p g كيف بيكون من وين لوين؟ Okay, so r p g is a vector that points from g to p always, right? So this is r p g. 
So P viewed from G, this is how you should think about it, right? Okay. P viewed, so, you know, this is a vector that is pointing from G to P, right? Or P as viewed from G, right? So this guy is R in the I direction, right? Is in the same direction as the I direction. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to redraw this one more time just to sort of really clarify it a little bit more. Uh, so this is your, your wheel. Right, this is point O, we said it has zero velocity. The center of the wheel is gonna have, what is the velocity of it? It's gonna be omega times R. And we just calculate the velocity of point P with respect to G. And I said VP was equal to VG plus omega cross RP with respect to G. And I ended up with omega RI minus omega RJ. Meaning that the velocity of this point is gonna be how? It's gonna have some component in the i velocity and it's gonna have this component in the j direction, right? Right, and ultimately you can sum these two vectors into one vector and then it's gonna be pointing downward, right? But the, oh, the final velocity vector is gonna be like that. Does it make sense? Yes. Okay, so let us actually try to find the velocity of point P with respect to point O because also point O belongs to that same rigid body. And then let's see if we can actually get the same result. Okay, so velocity of P, how can I, okay, uh, let me actually pick someone and then uh, from our participants and then see, I'm gonna ask someone and then see if they know. And I'm gonna ask, uh, uh, Julien, Julien Abifadil, can you tell us uh, how can I find the velocity of point P from point O? Yes. VP equals mm -hmm. VO plus omega cross RPO. RPO. Okay, very well. Uh, now, how can I continue from here? What is the velocity of point O? It's zero. Okay. What is omega? Uh, omega R. Uh, omega. So basically, what you're going to do right now, you're going to replace this vector, right? But So what is that vector going to be equal to? Minus Minus omega k, right? Omega k. Minus omega yes. k. Yes. Right? Okay. Cross. What is RPO? Can you tell me what is RPO? Yes, it's, uh, it's the vector pointing from O to P. Okay. So it's uh, uh, O P cosine theta i. Mm -hmm. What is that distance by the way? You know okay, Mazboot, but the cosine theta I'm taking a high degree theta, okay? But what is that distance from here to here? Yes. It's the radius. It's yeah. exactly, okay? So R I, my head? Mazboot, Mazboot. Okay. It's R I plus R J. R I plus R J, exactly. Okay. Okay. Uh, what is K cross I? Uh, you want to look up here, right? K, K cross, cross I is equal I. to J, my K? Yes. Minus my J. Okay, yes. Minus omega R J, K cross, right? And then K cross J yes. is equal to minus I. Minus I have minus, so it's minus I. Omega R plus I. omega R. Yes. Okay, so this is basically the same result as this, right? So here we use a different point. And then, then what we use here, and then essentially we got the same result. Okay, which is equal to omega r i minus omega r j. All right, guys. So no matter what you use, you would always get the same result, right? And from here, you can we can kind of tell that this is your your final velocity vector here, right? And it is going to actually be perpendicular to RPO, right? Mm. Okay. Because velocity of O is zero, right? So we know you only end up with 
Omega cross RPO, and then this is the velocity of this. So essentially, guys, uh, what I would like you guys to know for the exam is I'm going to be able to ask you the velocity of this point, this point, this point, any point on the rigid body, and then you should be able to find that velocity, right? So you could use this, for example, you could find the velocity of this point, and then you can use this point to find the velocity of this point, right? So this is the beauty of rigid body motion is that there's, uh, you know, uh, uh, once you apply vector uh, dynamics, you can get the velocities of any points on a rigid body very quickly. Yes, did someone have a question? Uh, yes, I wanted to ask if only the, we should know that the velocity on the radius is always the same, but in the, on the center, no. The velocity of the radius? No. All the points on the, in the curvature, so no. And I do live. No, no. So if a wheel is rolling, right, with no slip, right, then I know the velocity of the point that is in contact with the ground will be zero velocity, right? So if I use that point as my reference, right, I'm gonna end up simply with always omega cross RPO. So if I change, if I change uh, this point to any other point, I will always end up with omega cross a vector from the point that I'm interested in versus this point. Can someone tell me how would the velocity vector look at this point here? Uh, let's call that point uh, P2. How do you think this uh, velocity would actually look like over here? Omega Ri plus omega Rj. Okay, uh, if I actually use, if I'm trying to find the velocity of uh, this point, P2, basically I'm gonna have to reapply what I did, what I just did, right? Uh, so the velocity of, I'm gonna write here, so it's gonna be in the frame, uh, VP2 is gonna be equal to VO, which is zero, right? Omega cross, what? RP2 with respect to O, right? How does the cross product look like between omega and then this uh, vector, which is RP2 with respect to O? It's minus Ri or minus Rj, uh, minus yeah, so, Ri plus Rj. Okay, first of all, let us draw this vector. So that vector is gonna look like that, right? Right, so this is your yes. R. P2 is respect to O. So I put a vector, no need for me to put a vector anymore. So omega, right? Omega is a vector coming downward across this guy. It's gonna be a vector coming upward, right? So we know this guy is gonna be equal to, to this, right? So this is a velocity vector at this point, right? And it's gonna be the magnitude of this vector is gonna be equal to what? Omega times, right? Because omega across this guy, the angle between omega and this guy is 90 degree. So here I will simply put the magnitude. And the length of RP2 with respect to O is going to be equal to um, R square root of 2, right? So it's going to be R square root of 2 times omega. Is that clear, guys? And the velocity of this point is going to be equal to the velocity at this point. How about the velocity at this point, P3? And we do the same thing. Plus okay. 2R omega. Uh, 2r omega, exactly, 2r omega. So the velocity at this point is actually equal to 2 omega r. And if you draw this, you're going to see that, you know, this velocity basically grows linearly from point O. And uh, later on, we're going to see that O is actually called the instantaneous center of rotation, right? And uh, you would see that the velocities will always obey this rule, basically. It's going to be perpendicular to a vector from the center of rotation. But anyway, for now, you, what you should know is how you calculate them um, based on these equations that I just provided. What you have to do is get express omega in terms of you know ijk, uh, and then express the vector in terms of ijk depending on uh, what you are choosing for your reference point, right? If your reference point is a point that has zero velocity, then you simply end up with omega cross rp2 with respect to o. Here we're finding the velocities of points on that rigid body. All right. So if you actually <clears throat> Uh, so this is the, the profile of the velocity vector on the rolling wheel. Okay, guys, so is that clear? Any questions on that or are we good? Yes, doctor, I have a question. Yes. When we wanted to find uh, the velocity of uh, point P2. Yes. 
how did you directly know that uh, the velocity is r square root of 2 omega لانه لانه عندنا r minus r i plus r j exactly so yeah okay. so here basically you end up with just the you know when you are finding the magnitude of this vp2 right it's going to be equal to uh, this guy right so i know this guy is going to be omega rp2 over o times sine of the angle between them right and sine of the angle between them is going to be 90 so it's going to be basically 1 so omega times the length of this vector what is the length of rp2 o is going to be square okay. root of r square plus r square right yes which is uh, so r square root of 2 r square root of 2 exactly and then multiplied by omega okay. Okay. So, okay. Uh, this is very good. Uh, let us go ahead and then let us look at the accelerations of uh, these points. So this is again. So let's try to find uh, the acceleration of any point on a rolling wheel. All right. So again, I'm going to start. You know, with that point, which is that is making contact with the ground, and then this is point G. Okay. Uh, what I do know is I know point O is limited to move. Point O cannot have any acceleration in the, in the horizontal direction. And I know basically point G is going to be moving along this direction because I know VG is going to be along uh, this I direction, right? So the velocity vector at point G will not change direction. Then the acceleration of point G has to be along the X direction or along the I direction. If I try to actually relate the acceleration of point G with the acceleration of point O, I'm going to end up with that. So AG is going to be equal to AO plus what? Can someone tell me what is the acceleration equation that relates G and then O? Well, I need to give you something more, right? I need to give you omega, and then I need to give you alpha, right? Can someone tell me how can I relate acceleration of point G with acceleration of point O? Uh, alpha cross R uh, J O. G with respect to O, okay, plus what? Omega cross Omega uh, cross uh, R, comma, and G. Okay, very good. So the last two terms, we're not going to use them because point G here is not moving or is not accelerating on that. And in the but case of the alpha. body where point G is not moving, I can always replace this guy by minus omega square RGO, right? Uh, this Muzzle. is equivalent to that. Okay, so I know point G. So Anil, alpha, what does it represent? Alpha is angular acceleration of this rigid body. Okay. Okay. So I know, so right now I know AG basically has to be in the I direction. Point G cannot be moving, cannot move up while the wheel is basically rolling on this horizontal surface. So AG is going to be equal to AGI. AO is basically constrained. AO cannot have, or point O cannot have an acceleration in the I direction. If anything, it may have an acceleration in the J direction. So it's going to be A O J. How about alpha cross R G O? So alpha cross R G O is going to be equal to alpha R times I, right? And you can quickly tell if alpha is in that direction and the acceleration, tangential acceleration of point G with respect to O, it's going to be alpha R I. Okay, and the last one is minus omega square R G O omega square rg with respect to o is equal to rj okay you can if you don't see this result quickly you can simply do it right so alpha is equal to how much alpha is actually equal to minus alpha k right so if you replace alpha by minus alpha k and rgo is going to be equal to rj you can quickly see that this acceleration or this tangential acceleration will give you a tangential acceleration in that direction, or this angular acceleration will give you tangential acceleration in that direction. So this is what you have. And this equation is basically two equations, and uh, it's not just one equation, it's two equations. And I can basically relate my I to I. So the I components on the left-hand side has to be equal to the, my, my, I, my I expressions on the right-hand side. So therefore, I know AG has to be equal to alpha times R, right or ag is equal to alpha ri and ao right so this guy has to be equal to this guy and then ao has to be equal to omega square rj so ao has to be equal to omega square r in the j direction 
All right. So if you have a wheel and the wheel is rolling on the ground, then the acceleration of this point is equal to how much? Alpha r and the acceleration of this point is equal to omega r, omega square r. And then this is only applicable if the wheel is uh, rolling. This is point O and then this is point G. If the wheel is rolling basically, but it's not slipping. So if there isn't alpha r the tangential acceleration and uh, the other centrifugal no equivalent? No, so alpha r, right? Alpha r in this case has to be in that direction. Why? Because if you see here, this is your alpha and this is my r. So alpha r basically, uh, you know, this alpha is going to give you the angular or tangential acceleration in that direction, right? Of this point, because this is my point of reference in that case. Uh, <clears throat> You can also get it simply by doing that, right? So this is all that I did, right? I'm trying to get the acceleration of point G with respect to the acceleration of point O. So I have to write AG is equal to AO plus alpha cross RGO plus this guy, right? And I know alpha and I know RGO, right? So all you have to do here is simply substitute the value of alpha and the value of RGO. The value of alpha was equal to minus alpha K. The value of RGO was equal to RJ. Uh, minus alpha K cross RJ will be equal to alpha R in i direction okay and i'm doing this quickly because you would basically get that result very uh, if you also do it on your own uh, so is that clear guys here at least at least you are able to understand that the acceleration of point g always have to be equal to alpha r the acceleration of the point on the wheel at the bottom will always be equal to omega square r is that clear guys yes okay okay now what i would like to do is let us try to actually find the acceleration of point p how can I find the acceleration of point P? You have to relate it to another point. Okay. Uh, so let us find the acceleration of point P with respect to point G in this case. Okay, let me actually redraw this one more time. And then, uh, so this is your wheel. And this point has alpha r, and this point has how much? Omega squared r. Okay, this is point O, and then this is point G, and I'm trying to find the acceleration of point P. Okay, so let us use point G as our reference. If we use point G as our reference, then I know acceleration of point P is going to be equal to acceleration of G plus alpha cross RPG minus omega square r p with respect to g so in the case of acceleration essentially i can simply add them up so the acceleration of point p is equal to the acceleration of g so i'm going to take this vector and then i'm going to move it over here this is a very legitimate move alpha cross rpg so how do i do alpha cross rpg so so this is my alpha uh, alpha cross rpg is going to be equal to this guy right alpha r so this guy is going to be equivalent to this why because you're doing alpha right cross rpg is going to be equal to this vector right so this vector uh so you take the cross product because you have the vector direction already so this will be equal to simply alpha times r r is the radius from because distance from point g to point p is equal to r so you end up with this the last term is going to be equal to minus omega square rpg uh, what is uh, RPG? RPG is simply R, right? So the last term is going to be equal to this guy here, omega square R, right? So the acceleration of point P is going to be equal to what? Alpha R minus omega square R in the I direction minus alpha R in the J direction. So, you know, in a very basic approach you can directly find the acceleration of any point on a rigid body simply by using these equations okay now time is basically going to end uh okay, this last question like yeah, just one thing so what i would like you guys to do is close and then log back in because uh, this basically will expire in 30 minutes so i'm going to close this session and then i'm going to open it again and you guys will come back in okay